Hi, I'm Suzanne and welcome to another Leader Feeder podcast episode. I'm here with Kirk Langford, our general manager, and today the topic is about developing future leaders. Mm-hmm. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good, how are you? Uh, so to start us off today, uh, Kirk, what would you say the criteria is to identify who maybe potential leaders are? in mm. your group or team or warehouse, yeah. Okay, starting off with the tough questions here. Yeah. Right? Just kidding. Uh, so there's there's a couple things that I would think about when I'm thinking about how do I identify those high potentials or people that might be interested in becoming a leader. Um, one of the first things I would think about is people who have been looking for extra opportunities, extra tasks. Uh, you know, they have that curiosity to say, hey, this is what I currently do, but I'd love to know more or I'd love to take on additional tasks or understand um, maybe the bigger picture, right? So I think there's a, a curiosity that leaders tend to have that makes them a good leader in the first place. And so look for those employees, those people on the, on your team demonstrating that curiosity. Um, I think another thing is that ambition or drive. So I mentioned someone that might be asking to take on extra tasks. That could be a piece of it, right? So whether they're asking to learn different tasks, um, just take on more responsibility with existing tasks that, that they're doing, um, that's certainly a, a good sign. Um, I think another good sign is to look for uh, the teachers right? So the people that like to help other people when they're struggling, when they need instruction. I mean, being a good teacher doesn't always mean that you'll be a good leader per se, but I do think that it's a starting point. So people that tend to help others without being asked, right? So um, you're working on a machine that I've worked on before. Uh, you've just started it. I noticed that you're struggling. And so I go over and I help you and I say, hey, uh, when you're doing that, I would I would try it this way. That can sometimes cause the machine to clog. Maybe, maybe think about this or don't forget about that. Um, maybe I remind you of some PPE stuff to think about. You know, any of those any of those tips, pointers, reminders um, tend to be, I think, a good sign for a leader that they're looking out for other people on their team. They're trying to help uh, not just look after themselves, but the others on the team. So I would say some of those are are good ways to start looking for who might be uh, your next leaders on your team. Yeah, that's great. Do you think most organizations are always looking to develop leaders? Like, or, or do you feel like most organizations actually have their teams set in place? Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd say more yeah. honestly, more so. Sorry to cut you off. No, no. I'd say more so the latter. I think when an, when a position opens up or uh, a position is created or someone leaves and therefore that position opens, I think that's when they tend to look for their next leader. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because I think the teams that are always thinking about the leaders rather that are always thinking about you know if I were to leave or if I were to be promoted, who might be the right person to take mm-hmm. my place? Or you know if a new department were to open up, who are my uh, high potential folks? Right in my pipeline. I actually think a lot of organizations would benefit from having that constant hiring mentality. Um, In the past, I worked uh, uh, with another organization where uh, the gentleman that owned it was always, in his mind, he was always hiring. So he would always take a resume. He would always interview someone. And he would be very transparent in the interview. He'd say, we're not hiring right now, but we're always keeping in mind who might be the right fit for our organization so that if someone leaves, uh, whether expectedly or unexpectedly, uh, whether we have more positions opening, whatever it may be, if the need comes for us to hire, you know, I want to have a couple great names on the back of my mind mm-hmm. of people that I've recently interacted with. So his his mindset was, we're always hiring or we're always looking anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the right mentality to have. Now, I think what happens is a lot of organizations get kind of um, that tunnel vision of just focusing on what they're doing. And so we're not necessarily thinking about not only external hiring, but we're not really even thinking about promotion or identifying those high high potentials uh, within our own organization. Because again, we're just thinking, well, I'll deal with that when someone leaves, or I'll right. deal with that when there's a spot to be filled. Right, no, that's actually a really good mentality mm-hmm. to have, like mm-hmm. you said, like to always kind of be hiring, always taking interviews, things like that. I think yeah. that's great, because then you're always prepared and ready. Yeah. Um, but kind of what came to mind was we're talking about developing the leaders within our organizations already as we are. And you kind of brought up the fact where, you know, maybe the past place you worked at took interviews. Um, Would you say you need to have a balance between, you know, having someone in mind for a role, but also thinking, well, maybe an external hire would actually be more beneficial. Like do companies need to balance that or should they always just be developing Mm. leaders and essentially hiring from Mm. within is what that kind of sounds like to me. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting uh, point to think about. I I guess I would say it is a balance of both, right? Because in an organization where everyone's been hired within, there are advantages obviously to that, but there's also disadvantages, right? There's Mm. the sense that, um, you know, there's not a lot of new fresh ideas necessarily. There can 
can ter- uh, there can be very much a this is the way we do it here and and when people challenge that um, either because they want to change or they thought of a different idea uh, that can be met with a bit of uh, resistance and so Um, there is a downside to that. And there's also a downside to always hiring externally, right? Because that person doesn't necessarily know the ins and outs of that organization. So I do think it's got to be a balance of being ready to hire someone externally when it makes sense to do so. And when you've got that right candidate that you go, they haven't worked here already, but I just think they're phenomenal and I think they're going to be a good fit and I think they're the right person. Mm -hmm. But I also think you need to have this openness to who on my team is, is ready. And keeping in mind when we talk about you know, identifying uh, potentials for, you know, a warehouse setting. We're not necessarily saying it's always someone that's ready for promotion. It's not always moving up. It might be moving laterally. It might be a position opens in a different department or Mm -hmm. with a different task. And you're thinking to yourself, you know, Jimmy's really been uh, interested in in, in this other uh, function for a little while, and we haven't really had the ability to let him learn that. Now might be a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it can even work in a cross-training sense or even just a lateral promotion sense as opposed to always thinking, who's my next leader? Now, obviously, we deal with frontline leadership, and so we are often thinking of leaders. But as leaders ourselves, not everybody on the team wants to be promoted. Not everybody on my team wants to become the CEO of the company, right? That Mm -hmm. doesn't always happen. So instead, I'm just focusing on what can I do to continue to motivate and engage everyone on my team. And so for some people, it's just cross-training. Some people, it is promotion. Uh, I have to be aware of, of, of that kind of nuance on my team. Right, of which members on your team, you know, what they're looking for, what drives yeah. them, what motivates exactly. them. Yeah, what's exactly. Yeah, what's going to engage them you every day so that they'll want to mm-hmm. stay and be mm-hmm. happy with their work, right? Mm-hmm. So say um, say you are a experienced leader and you're mm-hmm. looking for members and you've identified a couple <clears throat> members on your team that you'd want to bring up, um, you know, to maybe learn some new things. How would you tell someone or how would you encourage that leader to guide this upcoming leader? Mm. Like what kind of information or tidbits would you say to an experienced leader who wants to guide someone yeah. who's going to be moving up in the ranks? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. So we've talked about in uh, other episodes and in some of our leadership tips and whatnot, mm-hmm. we've talked about um, the performance pendulum. And one of the things we talk about with the performance pendulum is that your high performers, okay, they need to be empowered and challenged in order to stay motivated and engaged. Because the high performers are the ones that are doing really well. They probably don't need a lot of guidance. They don't need a lot of correction. They generally don't need a lot of feedback. They just do a good job and they're always seeking more. So you gotta have stuff for them. If you just say, just do your job, don't ask questions, you will lose those high performers. So you gotta challenge them and you got to um, you know, empower them. And I would say actually the same thing applies here. If you're a leader and you've identified a potential leader on your own team, empower them. Right, mm-hmm. give them more responsibility, uh, challenge them, and coach them. Right, and and what a good coach does is three things in our program that we teach. We say that they build uh, they build on positives, they involve others on the team, and they clarify expectations. So you actually want to apply that same those same three pieces with that leader. Uh, giving them more responsibility, more empowerment, more accountability as well, which is, of course, just holding people accountable to uh, the consequences, good or bad, of the work that they do, the decisions that they make, and the problems that they solve, Mm -hmm. right? So I would say it's really about instead of, uh, you know, you stepping in as the leader, really step back as much as possible, let this person lead Mm -hmm. in, in whatever way they can. And that's not only going to show them that you believe in their leadership ability, but it's going to actually allow you to see a little bit of their leadership in action to know uh, where their strengths and weaknesses are as a leader and what support they might need if they do move into a leadership role or right. or just as they take on more of a leadership role uh, within your team or within your department. Right. Oh, yeah. great. So you'd mentioned that uh, in one of our programs. Uh, which one of our programs would you actually suggest um, emerging warehouse leaders yeah. take, like one of our mm. own um, is there a program that comes to mind that you'd yes. suggest for yeah. emerging leaders? Yeah, there's there's one in particular um, that we call preparing to lead. Um, and really what that's about is saying you've got people on your team that like we've talked about are sort of emerging leaders mm-hmm. uh, or might be a leader one day. It's sort of getting them up to speed with what does it look like to be a leader? What's, what's required? What are the expectations? What's involved in being a frontline leader? Mm-hmm. Um, and then so how do I do it successfully? And so that sort of preparing to lead uh, course or program that we have, I think is a really good start for leaders to kind of get an idea of what's going to be expected of me once I dive into this role. 
and then how do I be uh, a great initial leader, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're not talking about some of the stuff that you'd worry about later on as a leader, but just that those initial skills that really help you solidify, you know, strong leadership skills early on. That's great. Yeah, yeah. E expectations. Um, I hear that a lot mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. around here about yeah. how yeah, you're setting expectations and knowing mm -hmm. knowing how to set your mm -hmm. expectations mm -hmm. for your team. Mm -hmm. um, my last and final question for you is. Um, how would a company uh, plan for leadership transitions? Like, sh so should they have a plan or I guess going into mm -hmm. this, say they've identified their leaders, they're getting them into training, but maybe that transition, is there is there a plan that they should have for transitions? Oh, well, that's, uh, that's interesting. I mean, it's yes and no is what I guess I'm going to say to that. The yes comes from for sure, because you should always, uh, in terms of succession planning, you should always be doing some succession planning, which essentially says uh, who's, who's next uh, in line, depending mm -hmm. on what the role is or the position. Um, and that can be even in a task by task basis or a job task basis, but it can also be in a position to position basis. Okay. I think the reason I said yes and no is because yes, you should have some succession planning in place. Who's going to do, you know, if, if Suzanne gets promoted, who's probably the best one to take Suzanne's place at right. this point in time? Uh, would that be uh, uh, an internal promotion or would it make sense to hire externally because of the role, maybe the responsibilities, maybe the education required? So you should be at least thinking about that. Is there someone on the team now that I would say this person is the right person to move up and mm -hmm. take over that team? Or do we need to be thinking about an external hire? So that's the first piece in terms of thinking about transitions and, and succession planning, right? Mm -hmm. um, but on the no side, I guess I shouldn't say no as much as it's not always possible because I don't necessarily know how long everyone's going to stay in my company, right? I don't know right. if you're going to uh, give me your resignation tomorrow, right? Like yeah. I usually hope not. But if you do, then of course, that's a bit of an unplanned transition or an unplanned succession that's going to have to happen because mm -hmm. once you leave, I have to fill that spot. Yeah. And so it, then in that case, that's where that ongoing mentality of I'm always kind of in a position of, of, of looking or, or hiring, mm -hmm. that's where that can benefit. Because then in that case, if you do leave unexpectedly, but I've always been, you know, taking in resumes, chatting with people who are interested, then even though I didn't expect you to leave, I may have a few names uh, kind of on the docket Cued that I can up. go, okay, yeah. yeah, let me reach out to these people. Mm -hmm. That's exactly See right. See if they're interested. Yeah. So yes, internally, I think you should have an idea of, mm -hmm. you know, if Joe moves on, who would fill that spot, right? right? But even in unexpected circumstances, um, it's still possible to have at least a little bit of an idea of who you would have step in if need be, or, you know, who you might hire or think about hiring. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Kirk. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, so I hope pleasure. everybody today got uh, a little bit of tidbits yeah. out of uh, developing future leaders. Um, so until next time, we will leave it there and uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye.